Welcome to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series, where we bring you the best and brightest SaaS solutions for CPAs who want to bring value-added services to their clients. Every episode is an interview with a new solution provider dedicated to you, tomorrow's CPA. The Entrepreneurial CPA Series is proudly sponsored by Excolo 33, Building Value. Visit us at excolo33.com. Are you a partner of a CPA firm struggling to be seen as the expert in a sea of sameness? Are you looking to differentiate yourself and your firm as providing true value added services and not just ticking boxes on your client's compliance checklist? Excola 33 is a coaching business dedicated to accelerating growth and profitability in your CPA firm. Our 100 day business growth challenge has helped firms just like yours generate leads, create profitable relationships and stand out as tomorrow's CPA firm. Sign up for Excola 33's free training, eight steps to productize your service, where you will discover three reasons service companies are getting hit hard now. You will learn the surprising secret that Harvard professor Theodore Levitt taught his students about why we buy. See how nine service businesses transform themselves into product companies and get the eight step formula for productizing your service. Click the link below or visit us at bit.ly slash techs eight steps. Again, the link is below. This is a free course. It's a workshop and we'll walk you through how you can implement the eight steps to productize your service. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Entrepreneurial CPA series. Today I'm really excited. We have Tony Zork and Tony is the founder and CEO of the top rated accounting app, Accounting Seed. And he is also a technology architect, thought leader, author, and CPA. You heard that right, CPA with over 20 years of experience in the accounting and technology space, Tony is passionate about building a solution that works with a company's unique needs and is always looking for a better way. Learn more about Tony and his, when we had this, it was upcoming book, but I, I believe it's been released now, Econoplasm, a survival guide for the post pandemic economy. And you can get that at TonyZork.com. I'll have the spelling in the notes. Or you can explore the Accounting Seed app at AccountingSeed.com. Tony, welcome. I'm really excited to talk to you. And I really want to hear the story. How do you go from becoming a CPA to a technology architect? That feels like a big leap. Jeff, thanks so much. Um, yeah, no. So I, I, thanks for having me on the the, the podcast. Love, love, uh, love the opportunity. And I, I feel like accountants are my people. I'm an accountant at heart, and I feel like we're misunderstood and um, so much in life, right? And our attentions are so good, and we're such hardworking people. And um, so, thanks for having me. You know, what I started out. Um, in college, I was very interested in business and I had some accounting classes and I thought this was interesting. Like I really was interested in how the numbers rolled up and how they affected things like Wall Street and that type of thing. And everyone in the class, including my teachers are like, hey, if you like the accounting stuff, you should do that because no one likes that stuff. And there's lots of jobs. There's tons of jobs. You can do whatever you want. And I was talking to my teachers and they're like, yeah, there's tons of jobs for accountants. Not many people like to do it. If you have an interest in it, do it, you know? And so I'm like, this sounds great. I'll do accounting. Like, and so I got out of school. I became a CPA. I worked for BDO. And I found that, um, you know, what I, what, so I think there's three career paths for accountants is what I found like early in my career. And, you know, when you look at uh, an auditor, you know, it felt to me like that position was almost like being an attorney, like I, it was almost like being a lawyer, because you're looking at you're reviewing these things. And yeah. you're, you're assessing, uh, are these are these rules in compliance, right with gap? And, and do we have an issue? So 
it's so much of it's kind of after the fact, right? And we need good people doing that. But I decided, you know, I was more interested in the future and kind of, you know, where companies were going a little bit more. And then of course there's tax, right? The tax department. Um, but then there was really this whole technology side of accounting that I, I, I you know, um, put my toe in the water on that end. And I'm like, oh, this is really exciting because now it's all about engineering the clothes, making it faster, automating things, connecting data to data. So I really was just very attracted to that dimension of accounting. And ever since, Jeff, ever since I decided I know technology and I know accounting, my phone's been ringing off the hook like nonstop. And if you have an, if you have an interest in those two, you write your own ticket. My, yeah. my, my college professor told me that and he was never more right. And, and here I am, have, I have my own company now, right? And it's, we have over a thousand customers. I have 15,000 users. It is such the truth, such the, what we do. If, if, accountants are in demand everywhere. It's a great profession to be in. And don't worry about all those AI crap talk and all that. There's tons of jobs uh, going to be available for accountants. We have a bright, bright future because we're custodians of information, right? We present information, we interpret it. So if you have any interest in technology and accounting, pursue it. That's my advice. And that's what I did. And I, so I started, I left my corporate job. I started selling Microsoft mid market systems. And I, all the long way, it started kind of with custom reports, Jeff, where a lot of accounting systems are like, you know, I can't get, I want this with this. Can you do something for me? And then I got into the back of these systems, learned how to code a little bit, learned how to, um, you know, create database views and put variables into reports. And I thought it was just exciting all along the way. And by the way, accounting is a great um, kind of segue into uh, programming a bit because it's so rules driven and a lot of accountants would be yeah. very comfortable with this because um, they can really uh, get their head around it. Because at the end of the day, accounting is really a set of rules, right? And so then I got into, um, I had this opportunity uh, I had about like a half a dozen of my customers around 2008. I had installed Microsoft, Great Plains, Solomon in their instances. And they're, and they're like, can you connect? Uh, the accounting system needs to talk to more systems, especially this one system, Salesforce, uh, CRM. We're doing all of our contracting and everything out of that. And they're, they're like, you, can, you, can you get you know, Microsoft talking to Salesforce? And I'm like, no. I'm like, I don't, I don't know anything about Salesforce, like, what is that? And, yeah. what is and, that? and so then like six times in a row, Jeff, like this is like <laughs> within a span of like three months, I had the same request. And finally I'm like, okay, there's, I'm like, this is worth learning. There's like a bunch of people wanting, what, what on earth is this Salesforce thing? Like, I'll, yeah. I'll go check it out, right? So I go over and like, check this out. I'm like, what is this? This is insane. Okay, this is not a CRM program. This is a full blown technology computing stack. You can write your own programs on it, right? And, and when you do that, you're, you, um, it, it, it works with other programs on the platform too. And I was like, this is insane. I, I, um, so I basically said, you know what? I should just write an accounting app on this thing because that would be way easier than integrating accounting to these other things. And, right. and then there's also this concept of really it's a paradigm shift then, uh, Jeff, it became really a paradigm shift of where, where account and counting apps really work one way, uh, a technology like accounting sees really a platform and it's a tool set to bend it in whatever way you want. And that's, that's really the beauty behind what we do. And, and that's how, uh, long, long answer to your question, but that's how I got to where I was. So I hope that's helpful. I, I love it. And uh, I, I'm going to pick out a phrase that resonated with me. You, you talked about accountancy as a platform. And, you know, I think our more, you know, as a recovering accountant myself, I'm allowed to occasionally nudge our profession along and say, you know, guys, we need gals, we need to wake up. But a lot of times the accounting has been seen as, as sort of this lone island of isolation and, you know, the business exists around it. Yes. But the reality is it, it's meant to be the integrating platform, not the dividing line and, you know, separating sales from marketing from accounting is a little bit ludicrous. So I, I love that accountancy is a platform comment. 
Jeff, yeah. And, and so what, in, in the, if we look at the reason why, and in fact, you could argue that accounting should lead the process, not be the silo. Because if you, if you really think about, if you start with the end in mind as a CEO or a business owner, where does it end? It ends in the accounting. It ends, that's where it ends. It ends in these financial reports. It's always judged by how this appears in a profit and loss and a balance sheet, right? That's the end in mind. So you should be starting with that. That should be the focal point of if you're really tr trying to focus on the end. And I'll tell you why, I, in my opinion, what's happened, what, where we are as a profession and why we are in, the, in, in this is because we are too conservative, okay? We're, we, we, I have a whole video on this, by the way, where you know we're raised uh, to be conservative, to help our customers, and that's a noble thing. But then we also are in the back office too, which doesn't generate a lot of, there's no income generation from what we do, right? So then we're hounded for costs, right? We're like, I don't think I should have to pay for you guys, right? Like you don't bring me more sales. So the, the CEOs are always like, this is an overhead thing. So not only are you trained to be conservative, you're whipped down by these managers on cost and beaten into submission, right? And then you feel guilty for spending a dime. And then that parlays in over to your recommendations where you're afraid to, you know, you're not in the vein of kind of taking risks and being thinking bigger picture, right? And that's where you get stuck. And I, so my book is, my book is called Iconoclasm that I've come out with. And I feel like there's this formula of what I call challenge, design, and execute. And, and challenging the existing paradigm is what the first step is about, then ex designing a plan to overcome it and executing it. And this is what I feel like is needed in our community because accountants need to let go of that conservative nature beyond gap, right? So I love it. And uh, you're, um throwing a little bit of a gauntlet out there, you're, you're tossing a challenge at the accounting community because, you know, I, I find it interesting. And, you know, I, I had a very similar experience to you. You know, I, I, I loved accounting, not for the audit piece. Like, I, I really hated the audit piece. And I'm like, why do we focus so much on history? We have all of this data. And, you know, it, it's to me, I've always been you know, I, I like to joke that I get to be the king of the nerds because, you know, I can talk to the accountants and the tech people and, and yeah. bring that knowledge together. But, yeah, you know, I never understood why, you know, I, I get that auditing is a valid profession. It's a noble profession. But for me personally, it was like, why are we always looking at the, you know, it's like instead of watching, you know, the basketball game, we're reading the stats on the game last year and it's like yeah I'd it's like driving the, the car jeff and and, yeah. and looking out the back of the window not the windshield like that yeah we know where we've been yeah. or you yeah. know and trying to look through the rear view mirror because we're not even seeing the full picture we're sampling and so I, I love talking to another cpa with that mindset that yeah i love if you can talk so tell me how do you go from being an accountant to a tech guy and now you're writing a book about survival. So tell me a little bit about iconoclasm, because to me, that feels like a really, to me, it's a natural next step, but I'm guessing our audience is going, okay, I, I'm still struggling with the first step to becoming the tech person. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, so I'll tell you, you know, there, you do not, you just need to start taking an interest Um if you are interested in tech, it does pay to try to work within a single platform, one like ours, where you, you can do it all, um, you know, or you get into, you know, you, you learn uh, a technology, you, you want to pick kind of a technology stack, you could look at AWS or Google Cloud or those type of things. I think the advantage ours has over that is just way, it's a layer uh, forward, it's not an infrastructure as a service, it's really a platform as a a service, which is a, a step closer to you and will make more sense. But you just need to get in and start, you know, making a daily discipline of learning about tech and then be interested. And I'll tell you the the, the job market, the, the services market in the technology space crushes that of traditional tax and audit. Your fees are way higher in this space and the demand is 
insane. There's just no limit. I'm telling you, you know, that the CPAs I've had uh, coming, working for us, have never been, uh, you've never been short of stuff, right? And so it's more of just, you know, a, a choice of what you want to focus on. And, and, and there is change, there is learning. But this, so this book, though, in um, I, Iconoclasm that I wrote, you know, and, and I think, Jeff, I really challenge like everybody who's an entrepreneur to write their own book. Um, I did write this book. A lot of a lot of people in business don't write these books. They they get ghostwriters to write them for them. They're kind of more of a marketing piece. This is this is not the case with this book. I wrote it. It's it's my words. Um, I did have an editor help me clean it up. But this book is actually probably more of a self help book than it is a business book. But what I discovered all along the way, what I've been doing all these years, really fit this formula, which I call iconoclasm. So. And it's really these three things. It's, it's, it's challenging the existing way of doing things. It's designing a better way and it's, it's executing that. And when you challenge um, the existing way, it's really asking this question, why are things the way they are? Why are we running this process the way it is? What, and, and the reality is it's probably based on some kind of hist what I call a dynamic and I cover, uh, there's six of them. It's a historical dynamic that was in place that led to this. And then something underneath that has changed, but the market's not changed along with it. So there's opportunity, there's just opportunity everywhere. Uh, and when you start looking at things this way, and then a lot of people like see that they see, oh yeah, I see that. I see the opportunity and they'll even design a plan. They're like, this would be a better way, but then they won't execute it. Right. So execution is key to follow through and, and having a plan to execute it. But an iconoclast is someone who does all three things the, all three of those things. Whereas like someone who's really more just a dreamer will do the first thing and maybe even the first and second thing. I get all the time. I'll talk to accountants. They're like, yeah, I'm working in a firm. I'm thinking about breaking out and doing my own thing. And they'll like want me to be impressed by that almost. I'm like, well, that's good. You know, that's good that you've thought about, but honestly, it's about when it comes time for the showdown. Okay. Like in the old Western series, like that makes the difference. Are you going to break out? Are you going to go do it? Set a plan to do that. That, that makes it real. I love it. And, um, you know, by the way, uh, one thing I, I, I can't wait to, I haven't read your book yet, but it is on my list. Um, a lot of people talk about the integrator versus the visionary. And, you know, my favorite pairing is uh, Roy and Walt Disney. Um, a lot of people think I need to be all things to all people. But uh, me personally, I'm one of those people who are always challenging and designing. Um, but when it comes to execution, I happily hand that off to somebody else. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and with the challenge design execute formula, it doesn't mean you have to do all pieces of all those, right? It, it's, but you, it is following through that someone else is executing, it, right? Correct. So. I mean, clearly in all these things, I, you know, it doesn't mean you can't delegate any, you know, any or all of these things you can't. Yeah. yeah. And I love that because that's, you know, we all have different personalities. Um, but if we as a collective follow the formula, that's the piece I, I would bet most of the time, um, you know, I hate to say it, but most of our fellow accountants are really good at executing but it's like we've got our head down and you know I, I worked yeah. with an accounting firm um late 90s I helped them bring in Microsoft Word and Excel <laughs> and they're like well no that's a waste of time and money and I'm like literally me writing out like we would do our working papers by hand mm -hmm. and I'm writing these things and I'm like it's a little late for us to be yeah, to get there. So I agree with you that the, the challenge is not in our community of accountants, the challenge is not done enough. The execution is but not the challenge in the design. And yeah. that's really the opportunity. And there's so much right, there's so much opportunity. Well, and I will speak from my experience, and I want to hear yours. But the reality is when we start challenging and designing, we get to have a lot more fun. Oh, and yeah. we meet some really interesting people. Oh yeah, we do. And, and we develop better solutions and, and continuously doing that. And, 
bringing, you know, as an accountant there, you know, you're, you got to think, you know, you got to think bigger than where you're at. Like a good, a good analogy is like Redfin in the real estate market, right? So look at like uh, being a realtor, what, how things, how COVID, how the internet's changed things where now those real estate agents are taking like a 1% commission where they were usually doing 6%, but now they're servicing 300 customers, not 10, right? And I think that analogy is going to be completely true in the accounting sector where, and the accountants who can figure this out and scale through technology are really going to win big, big time. And that's, you know, uh, you, you touched on this very briefly at the beginning, but I want to come back to the doom and gloom. You know, everybody says like, if I think there was a survey out of the UK that it's a 97% chance that AI will take our jobs as, as professionals. Um, I see that as opportunity, not threat, but um, yeah. Oh you know, yeah. And, and, and no, I mean, so there, the computers are not gonna, they're gonna take over clerical positions. Okay. So, I mean, if you're an accountant and your life is keying in, you know, AP, yeah, I might be worried about that. I would start making plans for bigger and better, right? Um, if, um, but even things like collections aren't going to be totally handled by AI bots, right? There's, there's, you will scale through that. But any kind of manual clerical work will be um, eventually, you know, removed. And but there's that doesn't mean there's. 10 other jobs replacing that, that are actually a lot more fun and engaging. And if I were, if I was in those positions, I'd be thinking about the next level up and how do I add value and know about the technology doing these jobs. But there's, again, there's, you know, look at the truck driver market, who's the, uh, the doom and gloom around AI, and they can't find any of these drivers now. And they're all, it's the, you know, so people get scared of these headlines, which aren't really true, and it doesn't affect it that way. And there is a segment of this that's automated. But, but Jeff, we've been dealing with this since the beginning of time, okay? All the time, man has, you know, you could have argued in 1980, there would have been no accountants because databases are now doing this. And I was like, oh, we're not writing this on paper anymore? Oh, there's going to be no jobs. No, I mean, it's, it's every industry all the time and AI is just another tool. It's just another, so there's no doom and gloom here. I, I, I would I would never be more excited to be in uh, our profession than now. Well, to me, it's taking the shackles off and, and, you know, to me, auditing has always felt very clerical. You know, you're, you're ticking and tying and, and vetting. Um, let's let the computers do that stuff. And then yeah. we, we get to solve real you know, I, I doubt we're ever going to automate to the point where human beings aren't needed to solve problems. You know, I, yeah, I think there's no. huge value to that. They're not. And, and by the way, these, these business processes that you engineer have like a shelf life. They expire in three years or five years and then they're done. I mean, that's, that's part of what I love about our technology stack is you never really outgrow it because you can engineer things with a tool set. Whereas I would implement a traditional accounting system one way and and it, we would be outgrowing it by the time I was done implementing it in nine months the things were already changing right and it was so insanely uh, quick that way um, but I, I so where where I think the where I think the fun in accounting in is in, is the big opportunity is assisting these cost these companies and achieving their ultimate goal which is to serve their customer right all these businesses, they're in business for one thing and one thing only, and it's to serve their customer. And if you can get in there and help them eliminate integration, hell, help them build financial plans, help them uh, engineer their technology so they can focus on serving their customer. They're going to be calling you back all the time. They're going to build you in as part of their team. Whereas traditional things like tax and audit, you know, th those are, those are good services and they're very well needed uh, but I believe in terms of an economic uh, opportunity, those um, are secondary to what can be done in the technology space and advisory space. Well, and I love your approach to it, because, again, 
that accountancy is a platform, we are integrated with the client. And at some point, this is my bias, so you, you can challenge me on it, but at some point we stop being a vendor and we actually become an integral part of the team because as you said, technology is yeah. going to change quickly. Um, I, I see so much opportunity in that those accountants who are able to pivot and change will be rewarded in, in terms of money, absolutely. Um, but more importantly, I think for a lot of them, they're going to be rewarded with better client relationships. Um, you know, you absolutely. can have fewer, better clients. Yeah, Jeff, in, 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 or more and higher staff and more. And um, it's a service, right? And, and I can tell you um, the future of this is going to still be um, heavy support based from, from people where, you know, software as a service, you will, you will, um, it, there'll be a point where I don't know if you'll buy so much an app as you'll buy an accounting service and that service will be combined of three things. It'll be combined. Uh, there'll be a software element to it. There'll be AI processes to it and then support to that. Right. And that's where things will end up in the next 30 or 40 years from here. It'll, and people will behind be uh, core behind that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, it's just a, it's just a great time to be involved and engaged. And you can, again, it's, it, if you want to do more CFO type services and less on the technology side, this approach will still help you. It's knowing the technology that's um, so incredibly powerful and assistive to this. And if it, I could even see a, a point where, you know, business is under kind of even like 25, 30 people, it's very compelling to have an outsourced accounting team at that point who can do a higher performance uh, for you if they know your technology, if they know the technology you're working for. We have a partner um, called Augio uh, BPM. Um, they're, they're doing this with several of our customers where they take our customers and they completely are the outsourced accounting department, but they're now integrated with sales and support and now they're they have you know running for 10 20 30 different clients and 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 they know all the technology on the back end and can really help engineer and have the conversations and they're just doing really wonderful they're killing it well and i think the biggest thing i see COVID is the death of the silo i think we've all realized that that worked once upon a time you know i i still remember when i was early in my career helping clients prepare quarterly reports like that's who cares you know now it's <laughs> what's going on today yeah. um but i love that that integrated service and you know we haven't even talked about accounting seed and and that's deliberate i i want my audience to get to know the the person behind the company and and um i i think it's a lot of fun there's so much more we could chat about i'm gonna change well, if, if you don't mind jeff i want to do one point that i think is blocks a lot of people. I, I talk to a lot of CPAs and they get fixated, especially around um, cost costing and presenting costs. And they, right now they price their services where they combine uh, like something like QuickBooks in it. And they have one QuickBooks instance and they're running it for a hundred customers. And then all of a sudden now, you know, we're on an online world. So I think it's so important and it's just not me. Uh, you could you could say like, oh, he's, the guy's talking from self interest, right? You know, but it's really important to separate those for your client and not take the burden on of technology on your firm services because you are providing a value added service to the technology. Let let the customer pay for the technology what they need anyway, which they're going to pay for anyway, and let them yeah. choose right. And then you you price your services to, to run that technology, to power it, to support them. And I think that's just a mind gap that a lot of CPAs who are used to bundling all that in are really struggling with. They're really struggling with, you know, um, how do I price this? It's totally different pricing model. And I, I'm just scared to introduce it to people. I'm scared to move off of what I have. It's just yeah. terrifying. The costs to them. are already too high. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and it, with that mindset the costs are already too high right 
and 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 so they they have to do a better job presenting and showing the value of that which is very doable when you start to take in the true cost of doing all this i feel like that's an episode entirely on its own between all right nine, yeah because, <laughs> true you know i I, I feel intense pain when people say oh i got this software for a dollar a user for two years and then you know the price goes up to normal and oh my god there goes my margin and it's like why are you pricing based on your software yeah don't don't be doing that don't be doing that let you know the price on your services let let because you're just gonna be you're that's a revolving door you know and not that you shouldn't be strategic and pick your technologies which that is important but don't build that dependency let the customer pay for the technology. Don't, don't, you know, bake that in on your side because so much of it's out of your control and, and where the services are not. Right. I love it. Now you and I can spend all day talking about what the accounting profession can and should do, but l let's bring it down to really practical. So as a, an accountant. Um, I, I, I can't call you a recovering accountant because you're still an accountant. Um, yeah. What would be a couple of action steps? So we've talked a lot about a lot of things and, and I know there's the obvious self-serving, go check out accounting seed. Um, you're okay to say that, but what are a couple of action items that people listening today, my CPAs, my accountants, what are a couple of action items that they can take away from our conversation and then um, I'll, I'll give you a chance if we haven't talked about anything important to you, we'll come back to that. So what are a couple of action items? Yeah, I think, you know, the first, a the, the first action item that I would be looking at is just talking to your clients about their technology and their frustrations that they're having and, you know, learning of, of, of different, you know, technology platforms that are out there and, and, and asking your customers, you know, what's good about it? What are you frustrated about, right? Because I think that will if, just, just Jeff, starting to ask questions with your clients and have following the natural curiosity, as well as starting to think about those clients' missions, what other systems does accounting need to talk to? And when is it reasonable that that customer's outgrown a small business accounting solution, right? Because there's, it's very, as a CPA, it's really, it's really easy to feel like success is almost your enemy sometimes because these customers are doing great and then they're leaving you and you don't want them to leave the technology, you know, maybe using QuickBooks or Xero and you're having a wonderful time supporting them, but they're outgrowing that solution, right? And, and, and you have a choice. Do I try to keep them on what I have? Is that what's best for them? Or do I go with them to the next level? And, you know, it's just not the case that um, a small business app can service a mid-market app. It's just not, and, and a mid-market app really can't service an enterprise customer. You, it's logical that you grow out of these different services, but rather than fight your clients who are doing that, help them, help them evaluate what's best, uh, the thing next best for them. And, and then you become that more strategic advisor. So I think those, you know, following that curiosity and then go researching the products, right? Really trying to, you know, assess, uh, get demos. And uh, what is it about this that's good? And, oh yeah, my customer was struggling with that. Yeah, that makes sense. We could, this product would really help us do that. I love it. And um, you and I are going to have a separate conversation about your book because I, I feel like you and I could talk... <laughs> I might have to do a series with you. So all I'll, right, I'll, I'll, no worries. Uh, I think we could talk about pricing. We could talk about the book. Um, are there any stories or examples or things I haven't asked you about that you feel CPAs listening to this need to know right now um, that I that we haven't covered already? Um, I you know I don't think think anything other than. Um, be proud to be an accountant. Okay. It's a great profession and it's really noble and have, have more confidence. Um, and check, I, I, um, I have this video. I'll, I'll forward you the link. Why are accountants so conservative? Check this out because we get the crap beat us out of us for being an accountant. And it's hard when you say a recovering accountant, to me, that means you've been through what I've been through, which is you've gotten 
you, you, the, you know, you've gotten whittled down, <laughs> you've gotten beaten up for wanting to propose costs, you've gotten shot down, you've gotten put in a silo, all those things, right? And and so have more confidence, uh, but then don't be so rigid, right? You know, be more flexible. You At the end of the days, these rules have to meet gap, but that's just the end of the day. That can be 10% of your persona, right? It doesn't have to be what you're all about uh, and rules. You don't have to be all about the rules all the time in that way. Love it. And um, I, I found it on the accounting seed site. So I'll share. The okay. Link yes, the that's it. Yep. It's I, I love the conversation and, and this was a lot of fun. I love meeting other accountants who've broken out of the mold. Um, and I'll definitely share that. Why accountants, sorry, why are accountants conservative by nature? So we've been talking today with Tony Zork president and founder, sorry, CEO and founder of Accounting Seed. You can learn more. The links will be in the notes for the spelling, um, tonyzork.com or accountingseed.com. Thank you very much for your time today, Tony. Jeff, my pleasure. Thanks for having me.